All right, folks, so today we're back on the Xbox Series S and we are going to be looking at setting up Sega Saturn emulation on RetroArch. So before we get started, you will need to have your Xbox set up in developer mode. If you've not already done that, you can check out this video here, which will walk you through all of the steps that you'll need to get that set up and installed. And you'll also need to have RetroArch installed as well. And you can check out this video here, which will walk you through the steps of getting that installed and set up. Once you've got RetroArch installed, there are just a couple of steps you'll need to take to get Sega Saturn games running. So let's head over to the computer and we'll get that all set up. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add BIOS files for the Sega Saturn into our RetroArch installations. So in order to do that, we're going to open up our Xbox file share. We're going to click on Windows Apps, then on our RetroArch installation, and then within our RetroArch installation, we're going to click on the System folder. Then we're just going to take the Sega Saturn BIOS files, you can see those here on the left hand side of my desktop, and drag those into the root of that folder. Nice and easy. Now I'm going to be playing my Sega Saturn games from a flash drive, so we'll walk through the setup process of that in just a minute. But if you did want to save your games to your internal SSD, we can do that right now by just pressing up in the file path. And then within the main RetroArch installation folder, I'm going to click on the games folder. And this is a folder where you can create a new folder for your Sega Saturn games and just drop those in there. But since I'm going to be running my Sega Saturn games from a flash drive, all we're going to do is open the flash drive up. Then I have a folder here already set up, which is just named games. So I'm going to open that up real quick. And then we're going to create a new folder just by right clicking and selecting new. And folder. You can also do this by clicking on the new folder icon at the top of the window. And I'm just going to name this new folder Saturn. Next, we're just going to add some games. So you can see here I have a folder named Games on my desktop. And the Sega Saturn games can come in various different forms. You can see I have some CHD games here, which are compressed single file games. Or most commonly, you'll see Saturn games in bin and queue format. So if we open up this folder here for Radiant Silver Gun, you'll see multiple bin files, and then we'll scroll down, and there should be one queue file which works with that. So the bin and queue file games can just stay in their own folders. And what we're going to do is just copy all of these games into the new folder that we just created. And like I said, you can do this on your internal SSD, just saving it in the games folder in your main RetroArch installation. It's exactly the same process. Once your games are done copying over to either the flash drive or the SSD, we're actually done on the computer. So now we can head over to the Xbox. All right, so here we are on the Xbox on the main developer mode home screen. And we're just going to start RetroArch by scrolling right and then down and then clicking A. And now we're on the main menu of RetroArch. So the first thing we're going to do in here is create a new playlist for our Saturn games. So we're going to scroll left and down to import content and press A. Then we're going to scroll right and down again to manual scan and press A. In the manual scan menu, we're going to press A on content directory. And then since my games are on the flash drive, I'm going to select E. But if you did save your games on the SSD, you'll need to select the S drive and then navigate to your games folder. Within the E drive, we're going to scroll down to the games folder and press A. And then once again, we're going to scroll down to the Saturn folder and press A once again. And then we're just going to scroll down to scan this directory and press A one more time. Next, back on the manual scan menu, we're going to scroll down to system name and press A. We're going to press up on the D-pad and scroll up until we find Sega Saturn and press A. Then we're going to scroll down to default core and press A to open the core list. And then we'll press up on the D-pad to scroll up to Sega Saturn. Now there are three different cores available for the Sega Saturn. There's Beetle Saturn, Yaba Sanshiro, and Yabuse. I'm going to use the Beetle Saturn core as this one has the best compatibility. However, it doesn't offer upscaling. So if you do want to use upscaling, then I'd recommend Yabasan Shiro. But select the core that you want to use. Again, I'm just going to use the Beetle Saturn core and press the A button to select. And then because we have games in bin and queue file format, we're going to scroll down to file extensions. And we're basically going to tell RetroArch here what files to look for. And we're going to add CHD and Q. And what this will do, it will just avoid RetroArch pulling in the multiple bin files, which are in the bin and queue game folders. And if we skip this step, each one of those bin files would actually show up on the playlist, which is not very helpful. Once we've designated the file extensions we want to use, we're just going to scroll down and press A on Start Scan. And then once the scan's complete, you'll see a pop-up in the bottom left-hand corner. Then we just need to hit B to go back to the import content menu. And you can see there on the left sidebar menu, there's a new playlist named Saturn. 
So next we're going to scroll left and down to select the Saturn playlist. And you can see there we've got the games that we just added a minute ago. And then we'll scroll right over to one of the games and press the A button. And then the A button once again to run. Now there are some additional options which we're just going to go in and set. So in order to do that just open up your quick menu and you'll see the core options. So within the core options menu we're going to scroll down and see we see options. And then press A. And there's just a couple of things I'm going to modify here. So the first option is system region. If you're only playing games from one region, you can select which one. However, since I'm going to be playing games from all regions, I'm just going to leave that on auto detect. Next on the list is cartridge. And you'll see here this also has an auto detect option, but you can set this up to emulate a backup memory cartridge, either of the two RAM cartridges, the dedicated King of Fighters 95 cartridge, or the dedicated Ultraman cartridge. You will need additional files for the King of Fighters or Ultraman cartridges. Again, I'm going to leave mine as auto detect, but if you do have any issues with games that require additional RAM cartridges, then you would just come into this menu and select the one that you need. Next, I'm going to scroll down to BIOS language. This one's pretty straightforward. It is set to English as standard. However, you can change that to either German, French, Spanish, Italian, or Japanese as you wish. So just select the one that you like and press the A button. And then the additional options that we've got for overscan mask and initial scan lines, I'm going to leave those ones alone. Then we're going to head back up to the top of the menu and hit A on manage core options. So once you've made all the changes to the settings that you like, just scroll down to save content directory options. And then what this will do, it'll apply all of those settings that you've just changed to any game which is in the Sega Saturn games folder. Next, we're going to press B to go back to the main core menu. And we're going to scroll down to controls and press A. Then within the controls menu, we're going to scroll down to port one controls and press A once again. And then within the port one controller menu, we're going to press right on device type to change retro pad with analog to control pad. Once we've done that, we're going to press B and do the same for port two. Now, if you press the A button on the device type option, it will bring up a list of different controller settings for you. And that includes the Saturn 3D control pad and also the twin sticks. So you can play with these settings as you wish. Once we've set the controller types, I'm going to scroll up to save core remap file. And what this is going to do is ensure that every time we boot the core, the controller type will be set to controller. Now, the next step is actually optional, but because we can't do upscaling in the Beetle Saturn core, I'm going to add a shader to my Saturn games. So I think it just makes it look a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to scroll down to shaders and press A. And then press A once again, turn video shaders on. Then we're going to scroll down and press A on load. Then we're going to scroll down to the shaders underscore slang folder and press A. And then obviously you can see here there's a ton of different options in the shaders. So feel free to play around with this. But I'm just going to go with a basic CRT filter on this. I feel like it makes the satin graphics look just a little bit better on a modern display. So again, you can see there are a ton of different options in here. But I'm going to select the CRT Geom by pressing A. And you'll see at the bottom there a pop up which says that the shader has been applied. And then once you're done setting up your shaders, you can press the B button to go back to the main menu. And then we're just going to press A on the game itself and A once again to resume. And you'll see there that the shaders have been applied. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not too fond of the one I just picked. You can see there that the shader added a slight curvature to replicate an old CRT TV. So, what I'm going to do is just change that real quick to get rid of that curvature. And I'll do that by following the same steps. I'm just not going to show it here since we've just gone over it. And there we go. So now we have a different shader applied. And you can see here this has some subtle scan lines, but it's removed the curvature from the edges. So now I'm happy with my shaders. I'm just going to go back into the quick menu, and then I'm going to save these core options. So I'm going to scroll down once again to the options menu and press A. And then I'm going to press A on manage core options. And then scroll down to save content directory options. And again, this will save all of the options that we just set for any game that we run from the Sega Saturn folder. Once you're done setting up all your core options and have those saved, I'm just going to restart RetroArch real fast just to ensure that all the settings are saved correctly. You can do that by pressing the B button to go back to the main menu. Scroll up to main menu and then right and down to quit RetroArch. And once you're back on the main developer mode screen, just press A once again to restart RetroArch, and then you're ready to play your Saturn games. So just scroll left and down to the playlist, and you can pick whichever game you want to play.
So that's a quick setup guide for the Beetle Saturn Core to play Sega Saturn games on RetroArch in the Xbox developer mode. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.